Hello, my soccer universe. How do you like it? Let me show you. Uh, there's even more up there. There's an Espanol scarf, but I think it's better to have it there. And back there are also a few more scarves. That's what I did with my girls in the evening. I said I need to give this room a little bit more of a feel to it, not to have the jerseys, there needs to be more. I think it looks awesome. Uh, it's all coordinated here. The, uh, just as an explanation up here, Lask, that's the main thing. You know Milan is my second team. I would say Barca Ajax here. The girls said it's better to put this scarf here because it fits nicely. And you know, in 96 I was a huge PSG fan, not anymore. To me those are two different teams. The one uh, PSG in the 90s, everything up until the Qataris took over is to me a different team than it feels like a different team. Uh, so yeah, this I hope you like it. Give me feedback. Uh, I still, there are a few scarves that I want to fit on here. Um, I'm wearing Roma. I have the a Roma uh, joint scarf with Lask when they were playing. Uh, 2003 was my last last game before going to America. Uh, yeah, I have some Madrid scarves, but you know, that's... We put the uh, simple ones up there. Um, and yeah, there are some British ones too, and I decided in the last moment that this last scarf over there, that's West Ham, because otherwise there would be too much of a white hole. <laughs> and I know that the North one and the West Ham one, they probably should go through it for rain, but yeah. It was a wild weekend, and I haven't seen as much as I, us as I usually do, because um, there was not much, to be honest. Uh, I watched a lot on Saturday evening, but not during the day, there was not too much. Uh, and I barely watched anything um, uh, yesterday, because we were out, so I'm trying to recap it. From all I can say is no one wants to be in fourth place. Uh, in a few leagues, the relegation battle kind of uh, threw up some things. Some title challenges got interesting too. I mean, it was all in their ends. I don't even know where to start. Um, let's go to Germany, maybe first. Um, Actually, I want to start in the second German Bundesliga because there something weird happened. Köln lost to Darmstadt and they're still uh, five points clear with um, three rounds to go, three um, games left and they got rid of the coach. That doesn't happen very, very often, but there's seemingly a negative trend. Um, more importantly is that Union Berlin beat uh, Hamburg 2-0 and Paderborn beat Heidenheim 3-1. So we have in the German second league, we have Köln with 59, Paderborn 54, Berlin 53 and Hamburg for the first time uh, since a long time with 53 points now only in fourth place. Uh, third place is the relegation spot. Probably against Stuttgart. Second place, you get promoted. So, um, very interesting race. I think Köln is safe. I actually really want Hamburg back up in the Bundesliga. But it doesn't look all too well there. Uh, let's go to the Bundesliga itself. I mean, the big talking point in the Bundesliga was the uh, Schalke Dortmund game. Um, no doubt about it. Uh, with the two red cards given for Dortmund, Schalke basically turning the game around in the first half out of seemingly nowhere. So yeah, uh, already there, lots of talking points. Kelly Jury, I think he is, he made at least a goal and he assisted two. Uh, he made a penalty. No, he made two goals. He assisted uh, the second one. And right at the moment when Dortmund was trying to get uh, an equalizer, it is Mbolo who kills the tie. I'm sorry, I didn't realize that this microphone is hanging here. I just know if I do it without microphone, um, you don't hear. And I usually hide it in there, but yeah, I forgot to do that. Sorry about that, but I'm doing it <laughs> a cheap way. That game 
was crazy and it opened everything for Bayern who actually didn't take their chances and in the last game they did it uh, only got a 1-1 at Nuremberg lowly Nuremberg yes there's a regional rivalry there but still you would expect Bayern to roll over there nope Nuremberg actually got the lead uh, Gnabry gets evil equalized in the 75th Nuremberg misses a penalty in the 91st minute and then Gnabry has a clear run on goal and is just thinking way too much and doesn't make it that game could have gone either way. And if you look at the running for Bayern, they are playing still Leipzig. They're playing um, Gladbach. And I want to say they play Frankfurt. That's not an easy running. There might be something in there. No, they're not playing Gladbach. Uh, that's Dortmund is playing Gladbach. Um, there might be something in there still there. Frankfurt themselves didn't play that well. And let's uh, go over the uh, collected results. Uh, they only got a nil-nil at home to Hertha. It seems like it's a little bit too much to play Europa League and uh, Bundesliga at the same time. Bayer Leverkusen beats Augsburg 4-1. Uh, Leipzig gets a 2-1 over Freiburg. Leipzig pretty much securing the Champions League spot. Hannover 1-0 over Mainz. Düsseldorf 4-1 over Bremen. Düsseldorf, it's amazing that they are in the, Bundes the remaining Bundesliga. Stuttgart gets a 1-0 over Gladbach. So suddenly the teams on the bottom start winning. And this is where with the world we see a lot now. That um, the teams that are fighting for, for their lives are suddenly winning. Except England, we'll talk about that soon. Uh, Hoffenheim loses at home to Wolfsburg 4-1 and then Nuremberg Bayern 1-1. So we have Bayern 71, Dortmund 69. It's only two points now and if it's one point or two points, it doesn't really make much of a difference. Except when Bayern draws it and uh, Dortmund wins, then yeah, you're not getting clear. But one or two points overall is not that big of a difference. Frankfurt is barely holding on because Gladbach is also not good. 54 to 51. Leverkusen now comes up 51 again. I actually think Gladbach might not make Europe next year. Uh, Hoffenheim 50. Uh, Wolfsburg 49. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, it's just two points. I draw the line at Bremen. If you look uh, to the bottom half, Schalke now 30. <laughs> Stuttgart 24. Nuremberg 19. Hannover 18. I honestly... Everyone on the bottom winning, everyone on the top is not winning. It is absolutely crazy. So nothing really happened, and a lot happened, uh, in a way. A uh, little movement at mid-table. And yeah, Bayern is playing now Hannover. That probably is the last easy game for them. Uh, Dortmund has to go to Bremen, which is also not an easy game. Uh, if you look relegation, uh, Nuremberg at Wolfsburg. Um, Schalke, Augsburg, Stuttgart at Hertha. And yeah, we'll see about that. Let's go England. Also, again, I want to go first in the second league. And that's uh, that also the two second leagues I wanted to um, uh, talk about. The championship where we had Norwich beating Blackburn Rovers 2-1. Norwich is through. Sheffield United beating Ipswich Town 2-0. And also secures the spot because the crazy uh, draw between Leeds United and Aston Villa ends in a 1-1. Leeds United would have desperately needed a win. They are not getting it. There's only one game left. It is not enough. So it is Norwich 91, Sheffield 88, Leeds United 83, uh, West Brom 80, Aston Villa 76 and Derby County 70. And now it is interesting how they will play. Uh, Leeds will probably play Darby County, that's Bielsa against Frank Lampert. There was something, Spygate. Aston Villa against, uh, uh, West Brom will play against Aston Villa. And then Leeds might meet Aston Villa again. And then they play against, the, he, Bielsa might have to play the other Chelsea legend. It's crazy. I don't like necessarily this uh, playoff to go up. The Premier League also... A lot happened and nothing really happened over, over Liverpool, Huddersfield, 5-0. All African players scoring, um, getting, putting pressure on Man City. And then Spurs at home to West Ham, um, loses 1-0. Palace, Everton, 0-0. Fulham, since they're relegated, they're winning. I told you so. A uh, little, little too late. It really puts uh, Cardiff in big trouble. And that is what I think will eventually give City the title. Cardiff will not have anything to play for on the last day. And even if City now has to play at home to um, 
Um, Leicester, who beat Arsenal 3-0, they want to get best of the rest. I don't see them. I don't see it. It was enough that Leicester beat them once. I think they 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 have a chip on their shoulder. Uh, Southampton, Bournemouth, three three, which puts both at uh, ease, especially Southampton. Ralf Hasnüttl, he took them on um, spot eighteen, and now they are saved. Good job on his part. Wolves win a very important game at Watford. They were level on points. Now Wolves really looks uh, in prime position for the best of the rest position Brighton Newcastle 1-1 one, one. I was really hoping a Newcastle wins that so that Brighton has uh, something to play for still but now they're four clear four points clear of Cardiff um, who are they playing next Cardiff plays Palace and Brighton where are you where are you Brighton plays at Arsenal well they actually We'll see. We'll see. I don't want to say much. We know Arsenal lost. Um, Burnley loses 1-0 to Manchester City. It was well deserved. Uh, they should have been City. Should have gotten probably a penalty. The goal was just by a few millimeters in. It was a good goal. They were the better team. Um, I was just hoping that they can hold on to a 0-0 draw. And then a very boring 1-1 one, one between United and Chelsea. United actually the better team. Chelsea gets the goal from a horrible goalkeeping mistake by De Gea, who is completely off his game. Absolutely gone. So yeah, that means the table. City a point ahead of Liverpool. Liverpool has to go to Newcastle and not going to be an easy one. And then Wolves. I have to say, at the moment, I would say the last two games are more heavy for Liverpool. And Liverpool has the small... Made of the Champions League. City has to play the FA Cup final, so maybe that evens it out. I don't know. Uh, Spurs, despite the loss, 70. Chelsea, 68. You know, Spurs has four points on Arsenal. Chelsea has two points on Arsenal. Oh, 66, United, 65. Uh, it is tight, but you gotta make points. You gotta win somewhere here. Wolves at the moment is best of the rest at 54. Leicester. You know, they need the win at City to get to have a chance at best of the rest. Everton 50, uh, Watford 50. And best of the rest only guarantees a spot if City wins the FA Cup against Watford. So, twists and turns that we'll have as well. And we already talked about Southampton more or less safe. Brighton, four points clear of Cardiff. It could be over next week. It literally could be over next week. Uh, Fulham, too little, too late. Huddersfield, not there. Uh... Primera Division. This is the absolute laughing stock to me what happened there. Uh, Atletico Bilbao, Alaves, Regional Derby 1 1. Okay, so be it. Uh, Atletico Madrid gets the dirtiest of results on goal against Real Valladolid. That causes Real Valladolid trouble. You were not banking on points in Madrid, but maybe you could have gotten something. Leganes Celta, 0 0. Celta, maybe a little bit too little, too late. Then Barca gets a Messi win in every regard. <laughs> Messi, not only that Messi came on, but it was, a, in the end, a little bit lucky to secure the championship. In very dry Barcelona, new Barcelona fashion. As I said it in my Champions League uh, preview, Barcelona probably plays the most boring of all the four uh, semifinalists in the Champions League. And that says a lot. But Barcelona, um, well-deserved, much better than the rest. But they didn't play, you know, it's not the Barcelona of Guardiola anymore, but it is an interesting Barcelona. That's for sure. Uh, in Barcelona, they can always pull something off. And then we come to the Sunday games that just... Valencia loses at home to Eibar to a last-minute goal. Girona then ends the losing streak against Sevilla, and I do not get Sevilla. Sevilla wins games that they shouldn't win and they lose games that they should they should win. It is mind-boggling. This is the most inconsistent and in a way frustrating side um, in all of Europe. Because you cannot predict them. They're absolute random measure. And as I said this morning, with Valencia losing, if Sevilla would have won, they would have put some distance between them and Valencia. Same thing was not true for Getafe. They could have a, put them some serious distance between them and Sevilla. No, they lose 2-1 to Real Sociedad. Villarreal, Uesca, 1-1. One, one. 
Huesca makes points, but it's not enough because um, Rayo is beating Real Madrid fully deserved 1-0. And at the moment it is 1-0 for Espanyol at Betis, but you know, there are minimum implications there. We know Barca champions, Atletico and Real Madrid are securing the Champions League. And then Getafe 55, Sevilla 55, Valencia 52. One of those three is going to make it to the Champions League. Bilbao 50. Uh, then we have a broad midfield. At the moment, it all depends on what um, Betis and Espanyol are doing at the moment. If uh, Espanyol would win, they would have 46 and they go to ninth uh, place. The teams are level uh, ahead of the game. So whoever wins seemingly will go into ninth place. If it is a draw, they draw level with Real Sociedad. So, but you know, minimum implications. However, if you look at the relegation battle, Rayo and Uesca, there might be a small smidgen of chance for maybe Rayo, maybe Uesca, but it is really Real Valladolid now is in the 18th spot, 35, Girona 37, Levante losing to Barcelona. I mean. 37. Celta de Vigo gets ahead of with just one point at 37 points. So there are three teams with 37 points and Java with 35. It is super, super tight. Villarreal might be in the clear. I would have the win would have done them much better, but I think Villarreal might be in the clear now. Spain, absolutely crazy. Similarly crazy is actually Serie A. Um Bologna gets a big win over Empoli and Bologna looks safe. It didn't look like that a month ago. Roma, and I think of all the teams that I'm wearing, uh, yes, uh, Barcelona won the trophy. It was not very convincing. Liverpool won big, but it didn't change anything. For Roma, it changed. So that's why I'm wearing Roma today. 3-0 against Cagliari. They were had an early 2-0 uh, lead through Fazio and Pastore and color of eight in the uh, 86th. I have a gut feeling that Roma might get this fourth spot. The biggest game by names was Inter against Juve, but there was not much to play for. Inter was, I think, largely the better team. Uh, Juve got the draw, Ronaldo, his 600th league goal. Uh, a great goal by Nainggolan, but, you know, uh, could have gone in the end anyway, but I think Inter was the slightly better team. Napoli beats Frosinone, basically sending Frosinone down. Uh, Spal Genua 1-1, Kievo Parma 1-1. I uh, will see about the implications. Kievo is making points. Maybe I should have put on the Kievo jersey. Sampdoria Lazio. Lazio wins 2-1 and puts a lot of pressure on Milan, who lose 2-0 to Torino. And uh, I'm still angry about that. I completely, I'm sorry, I completely lost my train of thought yesterday in the video. I wanted to talk more about the game. <laughs> it didn't go anywhere. I'm really sorry about that. Uh, Atalanta tonight beat Udine 2-0. That's bad news for Milan because now you're really in seventh spot. It's still possible because you have a favorable uh, a schedule. Where you play Fiorentina, you play Forzanone, you play Bologna. But those are all teams that are down the in, in there. And Sassuolo at the moment is leading at uh, Fiorentina, but it's still uh, more or less halftime. So we'll see how that goes. Uh... Juve through, Napoli through, Inter uh, 62. Yeah, it's only three points to Atalanta at 59 now in fourth place. If Milan wins it, they're three points only behind Inter. That's the that's the additional maddening part. If you win this, you, you actually assert yourselves. Milan is in a mess, absolute mess. Uh, and yes, as I have them hanging here and I'm still a glowing Milan fan. I, they don't deserve Europe honestly. Roma 58, uh, one point behind Atalanta, uh, Torino 56 and Milan 56, Torino has the tiebreaker. Lazio 55 is in there and Lazio has the cup final against Atalanta. That could throw a wrench into everything. Seventh spot at the moment means Europe. But if Lazio wins, it doesn't. Sampdoria is out of it as is Sassuolo. Sassuolo at the moment 441 points um, would overtake Cagliari and Fiorentina if they do so, get the three points. Um, but you know, we have to see where this is all going. Fiorentina uh, with a win could actually uh, go right behind Sampdoria, but they are in no man's land. Now relegation battle, Bologna really big win. They are now level with Parma. Imagine that, 37 
uh, Parma 30, 17, 15th, Genoa 35, Udine 33, and Empoli 29. Empoli doesn't look good. Uh, let's quickly see who is Empoli playing. Yeah, they're playing Fiorentina next. Mm, that's the Tuscan Derby, and however Fiorentina is going, doesn't look good. Lazio plays Atalanta. This is important for me as a Milan fan. Although, honestly, I, I continue. Yes, I have some hope. I will always hope for, but um, if I look at it detached, they don't deserve the Champions League. Um, Roma plays at Genoa, and Milan plays Monday night at Bologna. So those are the teams that are fighting for something. And Torino plays against Juve. That's a derby. That counts for something. Uh, before we go to France, we are, let's quickly uh, see Portugal, because there's something big happened. Rio Ave, Porto had a 2-0 lead at halftime and they played 2-2 against Rio Ave. And uh, Benfica gets the 4-1 win at Braga. So Benfica now two points clear plus head-to-head. -head. Seems it's going Benfica's way sporting in third, Braga in fourth, um, all pretty much set in stone. And in France we can talk a lot, of, uh, we have a nice uh, battle for the Champions League, although I think Lyon is, Lille is in there. We know that. Lyon won 3-2 at Bordeaux. That was an important win. And Marseille lost at home 2-1 to Nantes. So that doesn't help them a lot. The big one was, of course, the French Cup final big between Paris Saint-Germain and Stade Rennes. And if you haven't seen it, you should watch the highlights. This was the game of uh, the weekend. PSG, two marvelous goals to make it 2-0. Both one assisted by Neymar, one done by Neymar. Neymar at his best. Own goal, Kimpembe, then uh, Mecher, that's seemingly his name, made it 2-2 um, from a corner kick with PSG, seemingly thinking they're cruising. Then uh, big chances from Pape once he slides, uh, what was it? Uh, he puts a ball in that I think Neymar slides uh, past it, and you could already see Neymar having some trouble containing himself. Then Mbappé, huge chance uh, where he hits the post, then uh, Ren actually has chances. Uh, ben Arfa could have made it. And you know what happened then? Neymar is showboating and Neymar is fouled. It was in the 115th, 115th, 30, I put down. And then he's rolling and faking an injury. Uh, Oscar worthy, absolutely Oscar worthy. Horrible. Uh, if you're hurt, you don't roll like that. For that, he should have seen a yellow. Yes, it was a foul, and it was a uh, foul worthy of a yellow card. But with the showboating, I'm sorry, and seemingly th then it got really a poisonous atmosphere, and I think this is what got to Mbappé with uh, absolutely too motivated to go in there. And then his face, I mean, he almost uh, destroyed the knee of his opponent and hit his face. Penalty shoot was interesting because everyone in the first 10 was uh, scoring, and there was no goalkeeper. Even close. I mean, there were two where they were kind of close, but they were not there. And then Nkunku, and now I know his name, who got in just in the 16th minute, right right after this Neymar scuffle, puts it over the bar. And he's seemingly going to the next season. And then in the end, Neymar punches a spectator. Neymar is a disgrace. He could be such a wonderful terrible. Neymar is worse than Ronaldo at his worst. And that says a lot. Well, let me know your thoughts about anything I said I said now. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.